Question 7 then from the 2022 Advanced Tire Paper 2. Complex numbers. Four marks, three parts. First part, just the one mark because it just says state. It says, this complex number is a root of this equation. If that's the case, state the other root. Well, just as with quadratics, to find the roots of a quadratic equation, you can use the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant over 2a. If it turns out that this discriminant is negative, then that means you've got a complex number because you'll have a real part and an imaginary part. And of course, that part will be the same. So they'll be of the same form. It'll just be one will be the real part plus it, the other will be the real part minus it. That's the conjugate pair. So you can simply state it straight away. If that's one root, the other root will be three with the minus. It'll be three minus i. And there's your mark. Part B. Hence or otherwise, find the value of A. There's an unknown A in this equation. Well, if you were to reconstruct this from those roots, you'd have these factors. You'd have Z minus that one. And you'd have Z minus that one. They would form the Z squared minus 6Z plus A. Now you can just look at the corresponding terms. Another thing, of course, about um, the complex conjugates is that if you add them, the result's real because the, neg the imaginary parts cancel out. And if you multiply them, the result is real because you end up with the sum of the squares. So for this one, to find that A, that A would be formed by multiplying the two constants together. In other words, A is going to be formed by multiplying 3 plus i times 3 minus i. Multiplying them gives you, well, it's 3 threes are 9. The end part, because it's an i squared, will be plus 1. And, of course, the middle parts cancel out because they're the same. So a is 10. And the marks were, forming that product to reconstruct the original quadratic was one mark. Finding A by equating the terms is the second mark. Now that would be the obvious way to do it, just by equating those particular constants. However, you might have tried division, which would be longer, it's a bit more awkward, especially with all the negatives going on. So you would say, well, for instance, take this factor, Z minus 3 plus I is a factor of Z squared minus 6Z plus A. That means it should divide into it exactly. Not only that, it should divide into it, and this result should be the other one. Well, that's just a z, so multiplying by z will create that term, minus 3 plus iz. Subtract, so it's negative 6 plus that. So it'll be negative 6 plus 3, which is negative 3, and then plus i. Now this part, I'd have to multiply this by this here. I should maybe put that in a little bracket. By this, so z plus negative 3 plus i. Now notice that part there. If you take that negative out, that's z minus, and that'll be 3 minus i, which is, of course, the other one. So multiplying that out would give the negative 3 plus i z. Now you be a little bit careful with the multiplication, so it's not quite the same form. You've got negative 3 times a negative 3, which is a 9. You've got a negative 1, but that one's negative, so it makes it a plus 1. And of course, the other parts cancel out. So that comes to 10, which means that if the remainder is 0, well, I'll put 10 there, equals 10. If the remainder is 0, it means that A must equal 10. That's quite a cumbersome way of doing it. Now, part C, the expression that you had in part A and B, z squared minus 6z plus a, so I've just put the 10 in, is a factor of this cubic expression here with an unknown constant in it. And you have to find the value of b, knowing that that's a factor. B 
but it's only one mark. I can't think of a really quick way of getting that answer. Well, there's two ways of doing it. You could either do that division again. So you could say that if that's a factor, it should divide in exactly, and then just make sure your remainder is zero. Or you could do it the compare corresponding coefficients ways. So you could say this. If that's a factor, and that's cubic, then there must be some other linear factor. So I'll just call that z minus whatever, z minus alpha. That should make z cubed minus z squared minus 20z plus b. Now I can compare the parts. If I knew what alpha was, then I'd know the product of them make b. So how can I find alpha? I'll pick one of the other ones. Let's say, for instance, you pick the z term. I'll reconstruct the z term from this. Now, what would make a z out of this product? Well, the 6z times the alpha. So you've got 6 alpha z. And the 10z, that would be the coefficient of the z term that came out of this. That should equal the z term in this, which is negative 20. So that means 6 alpha should be negative 30. So alpha should be, divided by 6, negative 5. It's only the one mark. Then now I know alpha, I can reconstruct b, because b should be the product of the constant terms. b should be 10 times negative alpha. So that should be 10 times, and the negative of negative 5 is 5. So b should be 50. I took a bit of doing for just the one mark. The alternative would be to divide it in. I'll do that. So if you divide this into this one, z cubed minus z squared minus 20z plus b, it should go in exactly, with that linear factor, plus a remainder of 0. Right, well, to make a z cubed, I just need to multiply by a z. So it'll be z cubed minus 6 lots of z squared plus 10z. Take that away, so that's minus 30z there. Minus 1 plus 6 is 5z squared. Bring down the b. Then multiplying this by, it'll have to be by a 5. You've got no option. So plus 5. So 5z squared minus 30z, it's all working, plus 50. Now, if the remainder has to be 0, that means that b has to be 50. There's the mark. I think if you just stopwatch out, you'd probably find that this was quicker.